Hello all, thank you for joining me. My name is Jamie Moore and in this PowerPoint presentation I'll be discussing what the electromagnetic spectrum is as well as the following points shown here. In the next slide, the electromagnetic waves travel through a vacuum at a velocity of 300 million meters per second with a variety of wavelengths and frequencies at different amplitudes or intensities of energy. The human eye evolved to detect a group of the wavelengths located in the middle of this range. This is known as the spectrum of visible light. A good example of the spectrum of visible light is a rainbow. With the mist in the air, the yellow light is being refracted through the droplets causing you to see these colours. In the next slide, with infrared you cannot see these but you can feel the heat radiating from them. Similarly, with ultraviolet radiation it causes visible effects such as damage to skin when exposed to the sun. Uh, wavelengths with lower frequency we use in everyday objects such as microwaves and also in radio waves and TV signals for communication, whereas shorter wavelengths with higher frequency waves we use more in medicine with uses such as x-rays, gamma rays, um, as you can see in the diagram here. In the next slide, magnets have what is called the magnetic field. This occurs when you try to put two north sides of a magnet together, they will repel each other. Lightning storms are charged particles traveling between clouds of the earth. If you were to hold a compass near the storm, you would see the needle spinning wildly. This is because the electricity and magnetism are inextricable linked to each other. You can't have one without the other. A moving electric charge creates a magnetic field and vice versa. The electric field and magnetic field travels between isolating um, at right angles to one another, moving through a vacuum at the fastest known speed in the universe, the speed of light, as you can see in the diagram in this slide. The next slide, the following image, is that of a transverse wave. This, where, this wave shows various features, such as the distance between peaks, is called the wavelength, and is represented by the Greek letter lambda, and is measured in meters. The frequency, or f, is not marked on this diagram, but it has a number of peaks per second as the wave moves along. This is measured in cycles per second, one cycle being a whole wave, which is from the wave moving from the center, the baseline, up to the top of its peak, and down to the bottom of its through, and back up the center line, and it's measured in hertz, or one hertz is one cycle per second. The amplitude is a measure of the wave peak height from the baseline. It is basically the measure of the power of the wave. When you turn up the volume of your music, the amplitude of the wave increases. These measurements are related through the wave equation. The equation calculates the velocity v equals fa. The velocity or wave speed is represented by v and is measured in meters per second. In the next slide, frequency and wavelengths are inver inversely proportional, meaning that the value of one goes up, the other goes down. The electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light. When looking at equations, the speed of light is given the letter c. All waves travel at the same speed, the speed of light. This means that shorter waves must pass more frequently than longer waves. Short waves meaning higher frequency and longer waves meaning lower frequency. In this next slide there are three properties of waves. Velocity, wavelength and frequency are mathematically related by the equation velocity equals frequency times wavelength. The easiest way to write this equation down is in a triangle as shown here. The way that you can easily calculate a missing value is if you do have two values and want to find the other value cover the missing value and then use a method provided to calculate the second diagram shown here. In the next slide, the fourth property of waves to consider is amplitude. This is a measurement of energy and the wave is carrying. An example of this is an ocean wave. The higher the wave, the larger the volume of water which carried more energy. The amplitude of electromagnetic radiation is a measure of its intensity or, more familiar in the case of light, its brightness. In this next slide, Beyond the visible spectrum in the opposite direction takes us to red and takes us from red into the longer wavelength infrared light. Infrared or IR occupies a band of the spectrum from 700 nm to about 1 mm wavelength. Objects that give off heat are emitted infrared radiation. Humans emit IR radiation. The only exception to this is cold-blooded animals such as insects and reptiles, as these do not. Our eyes cannot see infrared radiation, but we can use equipment to measure it and display its intensity. An example of this is thermal imaging system. 
Home Security Systems incorporate a source of infrared lights and security cameras. This gives us the camera night vision. Infrared lights are used in the many handheld short-range control systems such as TV remote controls. These use infrared light source to transmit the coded signals that change the channel or alter the volume. Low-cost remote control toys and often incorporate an IR transmitter and receiver to steer the toy around. The distance an infrared signal can travel varies based on the strength of the transmitter, but it's usually around a meter for household devices. There must also be a direct line of sight between the transmitter and receiver. If there is a wall or a large object between them, the signal can be reflected. In this next slide, most commonly is the microwave oven. Similar to infrared radiation, it carries energy to heat things, but does it in a different way. Conventional heating by conduction or convection transfers energy from the outside inwards, hence the dangers of undercooking something in the middle of a conventional oven. Microwaves, however, penetrate the food, and the isosceline electromagnetic field causes dipolar mo molecules, such as water, to vibrate as they try to align themselves with the moving field. This causes localized superheating from the inside of the food. On the next slide, microwaves are a band of EM radiation between infrared and radio waves. Microwaves are unidirectional and communicate only along a line of sight route. Radio waves, however, are broadcasted in all directions. Terrestrial microwaves transmissions are limited to about a 30 mile range due to the curvature of the Earth and require a line of sight. Transmission via satellite links will extend this to hundreds of miles. In the next slide, Bluetooth is a close range microwave application working on a line of sight. It has a longer wavelength compared to infrared allowing transmission through walls and other objects. Bluetooth has a range of about 10 meters, most commonly used for syncing smartphones with computers, wireless headsets, and hands for usage inside Bluetooth enabled cars. Bluetooth could replace infrared in many different areas, but the technology is not meant to be used for wireless networking. Instead, Wi Fi technology, which uses longer wavelengths radio waves, has a larger range and higher bandwidth than Bluetooth, and is standard that most wireless networking equipment uses. In this next slide, you can see a table comparing the Bluetooth in these five categories. Infrared can only be used in direct line of sight, whereas Bluetooth has no limits, only range. Similarly, infrared security can only be intercepted by a device in the line of sight. This makes it more secure, whereas Bluetooth is less secure with coded protection due to its omnidirectional nature. Infrared can work up to five meters, but Bluetooth has a range of 10 meters, making it superior. Infrared can only have one-to-one -one connection with another device, whereas Bluetooth can form networks when all devices are connected. Infrared devices build specifically for each other, whereas Bluetooth can work can all work together, making it simpler. In this next slide, X-rays are a form of electromagnetic radiation with higher frequency waves that carry more energy and pen can penetrate further. These are in the band of electromagnetic spectrum between 0.01 and 10 nanometers. As you can see from the image, there are a shorter wavelength and higher frequency, visible light being on the opposite side of the spectrum. In this next slide, x-rays have many uses, such as dentists using x-rays for dental issues. In the medical world, doctors use x-rays to diagnose bone fractures, infections such as pneumonia, calcifications like kidney stones, certain tumors, arthritis in joints, osteoporosis, heart problems, blood vessel blockages, digestive problems, and foreign objects. X-rays can also help diagnose a medical issue or monitor treatment progression without the need to physically enter or examine a patient. They can also help guide medical professionals as they insert catheters, stents, or other devices inside the patient. With benefits to X-rays, there are also hazards Although the side effects of x-rays while pregnant are minimal, it's important to protect the developing fetus from any harm. X-rays produce radiation which can harm living tissues. The risk is small but increases with cumulative exposure. They can also cause mutations in our DNA. Therefore, there is a slight increased risk of developing cancer late in life. They are also linked to cataracts in the eyes and skin burns, but only at extreme high levels of radiation. These are minimal hazards compared to the benefits we gain using x-rays. In this slide, you can see just how much exposure you can get with each image compared to a natural background radiation. 
For example, a simple chest x-ray is equivalent to 2.4 days of natural background radiation. In this next slide, visible light is known as white light, but only consists of a range of wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation, which we recognize as color. It travels less quickly through the transparent materials such as glass, plastic, and water due to it having to make its way between the atoms that make up the medium. When light travels into air from glass, it slows down and speeds up when it gets back into the air again. You will only be able to see the wavelength of color. These consist of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Objects around us, both natural and man-made, appear to us in a array of colors, but what we are seeing are specific wavelengths of light. For example, we see a tomato as red because it's transmitting red light towards us. All of the other colors are absorbed by the objects. The light energy can be absorbed in a form of heat. You see light change when it passes through a colored filter, i.e. purple filter. You can see everything as purple. In this next slide, so Isaac Newton argued that the geometric nature of the laws of reflection and refraction can only be explained if light is made of particles, as waves don't tend to travel in straight lines. Newton then passed a beam of white light through two prisms, which were held at particular angles that are split into a spectrum when passing through the first prism and recomposed back into white light by the second prism. This showed that the color spectrum is not caused by glass corrupting the light. Newton claimed this was a crucial experiment. He also introduced the term color spectrum. In this next slide, visible light has many uses such as periscopes, telescopes, and binoculars. These all use visible light by refracting off of mirrors at specific angles or using lenses to magnify the effects of light. CSI investigators use microscopes to review samples that have that they have collected at the scene have an increased magnification the investigator can see things that the human eye cannot they also can compare things such as hair samples to confirm identity other uses for visible light include tv monitors laser light communication and printing laser light has multiple uses including curing of medical diseases such as kidney stones or to simply cut a patient open to operate on in this next slide Ultraviolet is beyond the visible spectrum with a wavelength between 400 nanometers and 10 nanometers. These applications are sometimes referred to as black light. It has a shorter wavelength, a higher frequency, and carries more energy than light in the visible spectrum. UV light can redden your skin and cause blisters. A fluorescent substance absorbs one set of wavelengths but admits another. In the crime scene investigations, the investigators will use a black light to detect blood and other bodily fluids. This is biofluorescence. In the next slide, there are many uses for ultraviolet, first being for fluorescent pigments such as high-vis shirts, day-glow paints, and banknotes. Secondly, the most important is for crime scene investigators. This is used for detecting blood fluids, um, detecting bodily fluids such as blood, saliva, sweat, semen, or fingerprints. This is crucial for solving crimes. Without this, there would be many unsolved crimes. It helps reduce the risk of collecting unnecessary stains. UV light can detect blood on dark, red, or violet surfaces. It can find blood stains that have been concealed by paint. UV light is also used in fire investigations, identifying the presence of accelerants and to identify pore patterns. It also is used for UV sterilization, such as dentists, hospital, food processing, or air purifying plants. UV light can assist in environmental investigations by indicating the presence of hydrocarbons on land and in water. Police routinely use UV light to detect, identify and return stolen property that has been marked by fluorescent ink. Some narcotics such as amphetamine, cocaine and certain MDMA tablets are clearly fluorescent when illuminated with UV light. In this next slide, infrared radiation will hit anything it strikes. If it is powerful enough, the IR radiation can cause superficial burns and blisters to skin tissue. The greater damage, however, is by direct contact with a hot object. Even a heating element on an electric stove glowing red poses little danger unless you actually touch it. Intense focused infrared light can also cause damage to parts of the eye, such as the cora and retina. UV radiation is much more dangerous. 
UV light has a higher frequency of electromagnetic radiation, radiation, which causes more energy than infrared and can penetrate further. It is closer to X-rays than the infrared. UV light can break chemical bonds in molecules and cause chemical reactions to take place. Too much exposure to UV light can penetrate into the human cells and cause chemical changes in the DNA. This can result in a mutation and can see a cancerous cell development within the DNA. Some UV light is extremely beneficial to humans creating vitamin D. Benefits include bone growth, immune system function, and regulation of blood pressure. Here in the next slide, you can really see all the resources that I used for this presentation. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed.